Hello everyone, this is Chemdork and welcome to another Minecraft video. If you're just joining me, this is part two in the first episode of the Science of Minecraft series, where we're going to talk about water, and principles of using water in your Minecraft world, and how to use these principles to uh, possibly build yourself some advanced structures in uh, Minecraft using water. So if uh, you haven't yet watched the part one of this episode, please click the link uh, that appears in this video, and that'll take you right there. I encourage you to watch that before watching this episode. Okay. If you are still with us, then I suppose that you either watched part one or you just don't care and want to get into it. So I don't blame you. Let's, uh, let's get to this part two. So today we're going to talk about infinite springs, filling uh, ponds of water, and some advanced structure, advanced things you can do with water. So um, right here in front of me, I just uh, dug a hole, a 5x5 five five hole, and we're going to fill this with water. But before we do, let's look at this principle of an infinite spring. So I'll, deal a, I'll dig a three block wide trench here and use this to showcase uh, some things in Minecraft. So I have two buckets full of water. Wha uh, I can place a source block here, and this will be the source block I never change, so it's always going to be here. And then the question is, what happens when you place a source block in the middle, and what happens when you pl place a source block here? So, if we do this first and place the source block right in the middle, we see that the source block we, we placed on the left side is now stationary, and is not moving. It's still a source block, I can pick it up and put it right back down. Same thing with the middle block. Now it's a it's a flowing it has a flowing appearance, but we know it's a source block. We just placed it, and so indeed we can pick it up and put it right back down. Now, if instead when I pick this up, instead I place the second block of water over on the right side, let's see what happens now. And you see when I did that all of these blocks became stationary. And like I said in the first video, a stationary block is a source block. So this makes sense. I can pick up this block and um, put it back down with a bucket. That means it is a source block. The original block I can pick up and put back down with a source with a bucket. It's a source block as well. But we appear to have created a new source block here. And to confirm this, let's see if we can pick it up with a bucket. And indeed we can. And in fact, when we pick it up with a bucket, it fills our bucket, but then comes right back to being a source block again. This is a principle in Minecraft that's very important, and that is a flowing block of water, if it is next to two source blocks of water, will itself become a source block of water, or a spring block as they're sometimes called. Which means you can pick from this block as many buckets of water as you want, and it will never go away. It's not the case for these over here. See, I picked from it once, Here's an empty bucket. I'll try to pick it up again, and I cannot. So uh, this is an example of one type of infinite spring. Another type of infinite spring is uh, the other three block pattern that's connected. And that's this in this L shape. Again, the middle block will be our infinite spring block. We place a source block right there. Uh, we place another block of water right here. And we see that this whole thing becomes uh, a source block. And this middle one is, again, our infinite spring block. Now, these are infinite springs, and they work really well, but the problem is with these is that um, you must take from that middle block. Otherwise, if you take from any of the other blocks, again, it screws up, it screws up the spring. So in order to circumvent this, if you think of just taking away this block, if you take away this block, water will flow into it. It'll become a flowing block of water. That's then surrounded by one source block and another source block. So it should become a source block. And in fact, that's exactly what happens. Um, people, when they create these infinite springs, they uh, usually the best way to do it is just dig out four blocks and place the source blocks, place buckets of water in each of the corners. And that'll get you there. And so that placement of water, where you place a block here, have an empty space here, and a block here, is something we can use now, and if you notice, I can take from any of these blocks, and it still fills itself back up. But these two buckets of water are all we need to fill this pool of water. And we can make this as deep as we want. Start off by making, uh, if you want to make a deep pool though, start off by making a one block deep pool, and then dig down to get to however many blocks you wanted it to be. Um, otherwise, it's going to be very difficult to control the currents. So let's pick a corner, um, this corner right here, say. 
and we'll use that same rule where we have one block right here. We want this to be our infinite spring block because essentially the good technique to use when filling these uh, lakes, ponds, and rivers that you may make is think about creating an infinite spring when you are filling this uh, pool and you'll only need two buckets of water to do it then because you can constantly take from that infinite spring. So look for this L shape or just a three block shape. Any one of those will do. So let's use that L shape. Here is our infinite spring block. Here's where we can place one block of water. We can place another block right here. That creates a infinite spring here, which we can take from again and again and again, and it will never go away. And from that, we can just fill up this one side, take another block of water. I'm just going to put some torches up so we can see. Do, 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 do. Hopefully I, uh, I adjusted the light levels to be light enough for you guys to see. So we see we have one side that's all source blocks. Pick up from our infinite spring again. Place a block of water here. And this should fill out this other side. And watch what happens when I fill both of these sides. And then like magic, the whole pond is full of spring blocks or source blocks. Pretty cool. And all of these, this is actually one giant infinite spring. Um, so this works really well uh, for filling ponds and blocks of water, as you see. And so next on the list is to talk about some things you can do with signs and ladders. And I'll wait for the sun to come up for that, so uh, bear with me one more time. So I'm back, and now it is daytime again. And we can talk about things we can do with signs now and water, and ladders and pressure plates. So these funny, uh, there's funny things that happen with pressure plates, ladders, and signs, and water. So we don't have to write anything on the sign, just place it against the wall. And let's see what happens when we add water. And we see that all three of these have the property, the strange property, where they can stop the flow of water flowing by or um, onto either a sign, ladder, or a pressure plate. Uh, let's get that back. Okay. Um, uh, fences can also stop the flow of water, but not while water is already flowing. Oh, yes, I can. Okay, you just have to place it right. So, yeah, fences can also stop the flow of water, but they're not as useful because they take up the entire block. Uh, the nice property of signs, fences, and ladders is that, um, and pressure plates, is that you can walk right by them and fall right by them. And so I'll show you that in a second here. Do, do, give me back that. Give me back that. So I have a little um, demonstration here that can show you the potential of this happening in a vertical fashion as well. So I just have a hole here. If I place a block of water, it um, defies gravity and stays up top, and the rest of it falls down. If we have on this side, it's the identical, identical hole. If we place on the second block down here, I just place a sign. Now, I can fall through this gap, and water should be able to, but the interesting property of signs is that it actually holds water in position. So it looks the same from the top, but when we go down, we see that the water is actually um, held up, levitated essentially, by this sign being here. People use these for air brakes for st uh, stopping during a very, very long fall. Very simple to make. The same thing we can do with a ladder if we place it right here. We see the ladder also has the same effect. And you can fall through here, and in fact, I can actually climb up the ladder that way um, and go right down, but the water can't fall down. So it's interesting uh, and kind of strange things that you can do with these, with this water and science. And the last thing I'd like to talk about then is just a little bit about lava, how it's uh, a little different than water. So I have two buckets of lava here. Do. And the thing about lava is that it travels a lot slower, first of all, than water. Second thing to note is it only travels, it only flows three blocks instead of seven from the source. And sometimes lava is a little buggy when you pick it up. Sometimes it takes a long time to go away, and sometimes it takes a really long time to go away. I think it's actually a glitch. Sometimes lava just sort of seems to stay, but you still can't pick up the flowing blocks of lava. And if we go over here, um, give me a minute, I'm going to make a structure that will illustrate a, 
kind of interesting point. We say if we place a block of lava here, it should create one, two, three flowing blocks, fall down, and then create three more. Uh, if I place a ladder right there, though, and then place lava, see, one, two, and the third block just hovers because the third block cannot fall down this this uh, this this ladder. And actually, if we walk under here, we might get burned, so I don't have any water right close by. Yeah, sure, I do, so why not? Oh, we might get burned if I, if I stay away from the ladder, you see. Um, so, but this is, um, this is actually a wedge that's used in some of the grinding traps for mob traps. Um, and this is kind of how they do it. So if you've ever wondered that, there it is. If we do the same thing with water, we see water has the same effect. So we'll just create the same little channel for the water and see how that works. And we see water, it looks like it's a little different. It uh, doesn't look like it's falling down as it should. But if you notice closely, water is actually flowing past the ladder and then falling down. If I were to take this ladder away, and s in order to showcase this properly, I actually have to take the water away. And without the ladder there, now add some water, we see it flows just straight down. There's a very different pattern for the flow. We can actually create the same little wedge with water, uh, and all we have to do is make sure that the seventh block of flowing water is just hovering right over that ladder. So let's see. Uh, da -da -da -da. Uh, I didn't count. Okay. Um, that's seven, six, five, four, three, two, first block the source block, and we should place the water right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we see it just hovers there, just like the lava. Yay! All right. So that's really uh, some funny things you can do with water and lava, and all of these sort of features, if you expand upon them in a great, de a great deal, you'll make all of the advanced structures that you see in Minecraft. And I hope that this video has taught you a little something about water and perhaps even lava. Please join me for the next uh, episodes of The Science of Minecraft, where we'll talk about other features. If you have any requests, please le let me know in the comments. And um, again, thanks for watching, and have fun playing Minecraft, everyone.